everybody. My name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. I'm getting a couple of projects, just a couple, ready for you while um, I'm out of my studio on a trip um, for a couple weeks. So I'm going to have, uh, I have maybe just two things that will post. I'll have lots of travel pictures if you want to head to my Instagram and see travel pictures. Um, but I did want to have a couple of um, fun cards for you. And as it stands, I'm going to use the inked and tiled bundle again because there's a little bit of a time crunch. And so when you want to make a special card, this is the set I wanted to use um, to do a special card. And then there's stuff already laying on your desk. It's easy to just kind of keep on moving for what, from um, what you were working with. My desk is already busy because my actual work of getting my um, last online class filmed before we leave is off to the side. So if you want to learn more about this fun little bundle, you can watch this one. This probably has posted, oh, there may be something in between, maybe not, I don't know. That's what happens when you film ahead. But if you go watch, whoops, this video, then it will um, explain more about the full entire inked and tiled bundle. And then when we get back sometime in June, I will use the suite with the paper as intended. This one does have the ribbon that is part of the suite. I'm going to use different ribbons today. So that'll it'll be fun to kind of show you some of the new, um, two new ribbons that are in the catalog. Let's get going on the card. I am going to, um, many of, if I loved shimmer water, a shimmery, um, I can't talk, shimmery cardstock, and that was my go-to all the time. That's what I would have used on this card, but we no longer sell it. So I just did a DIY shimmer, um, and I love the fluid um, 100 watercolor paper as well. It just is it's not, one, it's not cardstock size, so I don't have it sitting right here with all my, my neutrals. I have to always go look for, well, where did I put that pack of it? Um, but it's a fun, artsy kind of cardstock to work with, and we're going to do artsy on this. Um, when I finished that last card, I said, I'll get back to the art of stamping, and then I thought, no, I want to do that. I'm going to take a little bit of extra time, even though I don't have it, on this card and do something that's a little bit more of the art of stamping. So I'm going to use some vanilla cardstock, which I used on my last one, the watercolor, and then I used this on the last one as well. It's the new cardstock. I tried it with the gold, and in the end, I liked it with this color better. And then I'm going to use Moody Mauve. Let me just tell, tell you, if you haven't been shopping, before we started on this trip, my husband's like, how many clothes are you going to buy? And I'm like, I think I'm good. I don't think I need any clothes because, you know, we're going into a temperate climate. Um... And it's been temperate. It's now warm here, but it's been temperate. But, you know, as you get one thing, you're like, well, it kind of needs this, which takes you back to the store. And then maybe you have to return something, which then you see something else. Um, so I do have almost a whole new order. He won't even notice. Because, um, you know, it'll just my clothes kind of all look the same, except I'm not a pink person. And Moody Mauve is everywhere. Every single store you go to to buy clothes you're going to see Moody Mauve. So it is the color. And you can say it, I know, move <laughs> in different parts of um, the world. We say mauve differently. So let's start with the actual focal point of this card. I'm going to use the same stamp that I did on the other one, but this time we're going to emboss it. And that's going to give a little bit of that um, art of stamping feel to it. So I'm just going to use my Versamark. And although the card looks like it might take a long time, it doesn't. It's a super fast card. Just going to give you a couple of tips, though, as we go along. So I'm going to, this was the whole sheet of cardstock because it comes a funky size, the watercolor cardstock. Um, and this way I can just cut it as I go instead of cutting it and then cutting it down. So make sure you get everywhere. So it's stamped in the Versamark. And then I didn't put this up from when I just used it. This is our clear embossing powder. I mean, why put it up if you're just going to immediately make another card, right? I don't have time to clean up in between to just mess it up again. So when you do something like this, you can see I just barely tapped off. You want to make sure you get all that ink, all that powder off. See, more came off because otherwise it's going to be inside all of those grooves and holes, which make this stamp be especially pretty. And I will take a second and put that back when I'm done because I don't want this sitting here. My cat's well, um, have their way with that by knocking it over if I would leave it from the trip. Now, it does take watercolor cardstock a little bit longer to heat when you use your heat tool. So I like to get it warm first and then I'll heat it. 
because if you over melt this, it's not going to do the fun resist technique that I want to do on this card. So I'm just going to heat it. And now I'm going to start here. And as you see it change, it is a sunny day, so that should help you be able to see. You want it to go nice and glossy. And then when you see it go glossy, move on. Otherwise, if it goes unglossy, then it won't resist as well. Sometimes I heat from the bottom, but you don't want to do that with watercolor cardstock because it's, it would take it too long. And then just kind of give it a whirl around to make sure everything's shiny. You want shiny. Now I'm going to pull my paper trimmer up here, and now I'll be able to save as much of this paper as I can for another project. So pop this in here, and I hope you can see it. It's hard to see when it's... Um, clear on white. That's pretty good. You just want it kind of centered and then I'm going to get the bottom and a little off the top. And then we have this. Now we're going to do some fun painting with this. I should have put some more water in my brush. I think I might have used it almost all up before. I'm going to start with my mauve. And I'm going to color my flowers that way. Now you want to take your stamp pad and squish it on here so you get some ink. And then I'm going to use my water painter. And here's how I determined what size of water painter because they come in three sizes. I used the one that had the most water in it. <laughs> I don't know. We'll be lucky if I get through without having to take a break. So I'm going to get my brush started on this card by just going ahead and putting some water on my card. So just add a couple drops and this will kind of get your water, your card stuck around the image that you're coloring. So it's ready to accept it and it'll bleed a little bit more, which is what we want. Then you'll want to have a tissue or something ready. Because on my other one, I smeared a little bit further down into the stem. It's hard to see on this one, but you know, it's watercolor and watercolors like that. So now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put a tiny bit of water. You don't need much in here because most of your water is over here. But this will let this color in particular start lighter. And so just kind of add it. You can see how then it just gravitates towards all that water. This is really fun to do. Just dab it on here. You do want it to run because that's going to give it that extra um, aura around your images. And then I'm going to pull some of this water so we have a little bit lighter around. This is where it starts to go into my stems. Just kind of, I want water, but I don't want so much that it's not going to be able to be painted. Now I'm going to get a little bit darker ink. I'm going to put it down at the bottoms of these flowers. And you don't really have to do anything. The water pulls it for you. And I'm going to let that sit a second and then I'll soak up some of that water. Looks pretty good though. I get it like a medium color right here so you can kind of work this so it's not the light and it's not that dark. And put it right here in the middle. I kind of let that bleed around. I heard that beeping. Um, that cord, the, um, Vacuum cleaner is now fully charged. <laughs> I think it got knocked off the charger when the cats were chasing each other. So let that sit and then I'm gonna try to get as much, this is why I wasted so much water before, was getting this color out of here. So kind of drop that on here. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. Try to not to let water touch water because when the water touches the water, then you just how that ink kind of soaked up in here. So right here where there's water, I'm going to be a little bit more careful. This time I'm getting the areas around the stem so I can color those. 
And just put some water on here and then kind of move that water around. You can always add more later. If you get too much, you can just sop it off. So it's not a big deal, except that I don't have very much water left in my brush. And then I'm gonna do Lost Lagoon, which is the color I used on the last card. Squish some more ink in there, I used it all on my other one. If you start with dry paper, then sometimes where you touch the paper, that is hard, it's a darker color and it's harder to get it to come back out. So just touch that on here. I know that has a little bit of tinge of the mauve because I didn't get it all out, but this green's gonna cover that up, so. And then we still have one more color to add for some background. Right here where they touch, I'm just gonna kind of dab that in there. I didn't put as much water up there, so I'd be able to kind of control where this is going. See, it's where they touched the water before. I'm gonna have to go fix that. Maybe I can go fix that and get some water in my brush. It's always something, isn't it? So we're going to squeeze this out while it has all this green on and kind of clean this off. And this will also then let it run. I'm going to have it run more over here. I'm going to go put some more water in here and I'm going to take my vacuum off so it stops that noise. I'm also going to, you can see how that's running into there now. I don't want that to happen. So here's a little tip for you. I'm going to aim this down just like that. And now it will stop running into there. We can fix that at the end when we just dab some more colors on it. Okay, I have fresh water all the way almost filled up. You never want to fill it all the way to the top. You need to have room for it to release itself. And my vacuum is turned off. Those RoboVacs, life of their own. So I'm just taking my tissue now and kind of dabbing this up. And now before I add my last color, I can go back in and I can kind of fix anywhere where I think it might need a little bit more of the mauve or a little bit more of the green. We lost quite a bit of the Lost Lagoon. I'm just gonna add some here. But you know it's watercolor and watercolor like this is never gonna be perfect. I want the smeary and it's just fun. Go back over these leaves. I kind of like where the pink mixed with it here in the middle. There we go. Squeeze this out so I don't mix green in with my moth before I even start. Add a tiny bit of water. That was more than a tiny bit. We'll see how it does. This will also give it like two variations of color. It's kind of going in there. And you can always sop it up. It has to sit on the paper for a pretty long time before you can't add water to it and keep picking it back up. So we've got that. Now again, you wanna get all this ink out. These are some darker colors. Some colors it doesn't take as much, other colors it takes longer. So now I mostly want the rest of this to go to this side. And last time on my other, my first card, you know your prototype, um, when you have absolutely no clue what you want your card to look like. So I'm gonna put a little bit here. And I'm going to smear this into the paper. And you can see where it touches. As soon as it touches that color, it grabs it. And I'm going to use pecan pie. That's another one. We have two colors here that it will depend on where you live, on how you say those words. I'm just going to kind of touch. I'm not going to push it over to the green yet because you can see right here it's going to mix. So I'm going to just leave that little bit there until I have this all on here. The other 
one. I ended up taking off a lot of the pecan. On this one, I'm gonna leave a little bit more and then we can decide which one we like best. Sometimes I even have these on the card and then I go back and I'm like, this needs just a touch of something here. And you can do that once it's on there. So I'm gonna leave the paint in this. And I do I like that a little bit of that darker down there. I'm just gonna kind of dab that up a little bit, but not everywhere like I did on my other one. And we're gonna get it to go lighter out this way by dabbing it up and adding a little bit more. And because my brush has a little bit of that color on it, you can see it's trending mauve out that way but it doesn't matter because we're putting it on and it may be one of the undertones of color in this ink. I haven't hardly worked with it at all. And then up here, I want that to be a little bit lighter. And right here, just a little bit lighter. So you just add your water and then quickly pick it up and it grabs some of the ink with it. That's looking pretty good, huh? And then at the very end, if you want your whatever is um, embossed to kind of pop a little bit more, get a clean one of these once it's nice and dry and just kind of wipe that powder off. I may or I may not do that. I haven't decided. I didn't do it on my first one. I kind of liked the more organic look for it. Now let's go over to our card. You would have asked me a couple of days ago, I would have said my nails were pebbled path, but putting them next to this card, they look a little bit like they could tend towards the mauve too. All those colors kind of mix really well together. And just go shopping, just go to Target and look at the t-shirts. Go to Old Navy and look at the t-shirts. Go to some expensive boutiques and look at the expensive things. I got some colors that I don't normally dress in. I was telling myself I needed stuff that was springy in spring colors, but warm. And I didn't have a lot of that. So see, you have to shop sometimes. I used this on the last card, but last time I, when I made the background image, I used colors and I stamped a bunch of them. Now I'm only gonna use this so you don't want all of your circles in there. A lot of this is gonna get covered up, so don't overthink it, but you just don't want it to look like you had uneven polka dots around the side of your card. But most of this you will end up not seeing and it will, um, dry a lot lighter than this. Those so centers are not going to look nearly that purpley when this ink dries. So just you're kind of just making it so the back of your card is not empty. Don't want some empty card stock. Not on a flower, a floral card. There we go. And then I'm going to do another congratulations card because you just never know when you might need one, right? that time of year. So I'm going to use Lost Lagoon. And this time, the last time I did it, I stamped and then I punched. So this time I thought I'm going to use the same punch. I wonder what, how hard it is to punch and then stamp. And it worked pretty well. So we'll see if it also works pretty well when I'm on camera. So I have my congratulations. And I'm going to put it right here. Aim from point to point. And now I have mauve ink on my hand. And look, Pretty easy, because you have those points that you can kind of land your stamp on. It's a tiny bit crooked. We have two sides, so you can always stamp it twice and then see which one is best. I was looking at the ink on my hand and not where I was stamping. Much better, but now I'm dirty and I still have lots of stuff to film today. And then I'm just gonna take this, maybe if I can pick it up, and cut these off. And then here's where we're gonna turn this into our shimmery white. You know, sometimes you squeeze your Wink of Stella and you get a whole blob and you're like, oh, that's beautiful, but I didn't want that on this card. This time I'm gonna squeeze a whole blob and I want it on my card. I already squeezed it for the other one, so I really don't need to squeeze it again. But see, it's coming out the side like that, so just kind of move it. And I don't want it everywhere. I don't want it on top of my image. Look how beautiful that is. So at first I'm just gonna move it around till I've used up the lots of it that's on there. 
especially on that um, pecan because it turns it into a gold. So pretty. So you can take our shimmer card stuff away, but we can still find ways to make things super shimmery and beautiful. And when you get blobs of Wink of Stella, it looks like it's clear, but when you have a blob, you do notice that it is gold based. Not overtly, but it's got gold. That was barely even a blob and look how much of that I got. Isn't that pretty? I hope you can see it. I hope the camera picks it up. Let me have it here again. And the thing with shimmer white cardstock is it would all be shimmery. This way we can kind of control the shimmer. And we got the shimmer white cardstock had that coating so we could have done the watercolor. This watercolor cardstock, you can do a whole lot more than just what you could on that. Now I have the new paper here. I'm gonna move this one over a little bit on my other one. I think I have it a little far out. So I'm gonna add some adhesive. This is um, two kinds of cardstock that don't love to be stuck. <laughs> so you do have to kind of put it on here and now I'm gonna have, well, now I have sparkles on my hand. Last time I waited for it to dry because I was doing other stuff. What do I have that I can touch it with other than mine here? Now the next card I fold is going to get sparkles on it. That's not a bad thing, right? So we have this. Now we're going to use two new kinds of ribbon. They're not really ribbon. This is the new In Color Jute. I love it. And again, it's those, because these colors are earthy and organic, and these, the new In Colors, is perfect combination with jute. And it's fat jute. It's fatter than what... Um, like our linen thread or any of those kind of things that we have right now. So I'm going to do two of them about this long, but then we're going to kind of deconstruct this a little bit. So what you want to do, put this on here in case there's still a little bit. I want this section right here. Sometimes when I turn things over, do you do that? You forget which part you were working with. Put some adhesive here. So it's ready. And then you're going to take this and you want to untwist it, but you don't want it to come apart because we want it to look bigger and fatter. See how you can get that twisty? So you kind of twist and then you move down and kind of hold and don't let the back, the whatever's behind you retwist. So it's going to kind of take all your fingers, but it's not hard. And after you do it once, so it gets all uncoiled. The farther you, farther you go, well, unless you let go. So once you have this much, you're gonna hold your card up. I want it right here. So I'm gonna fold this bit over. And then you can kind of hold it here and let that untwist. and then fold that back around. Isn't that pretty? So it still looks like jute, but now it's a little bit more of a romantic jute. For our congratulations card. Now we're gonna do the same thing. If you want, you could cut it a little bit longer and start by sticking this on there, but I found that when I was twisting it that way, it was popping off. So I just did it this way. It's not hard. So I'm going to put this right next to that one because now we know where this is going to go. And just untwist. It makes it look a little trellisy, a little latticey. Um, if you just did one, then it would look a little bit more like that when you do two because they don't quite match up. It doesn't loses it a little bit, but it's very pretty. I've stuck myself to the card. So when you have those here, just take them and kind of press it into it because we're going to do one more ribbon. Now this is the ribbon that is called Wavy Trim. It's part of the Earth and Elegance thing and it's really one of my favorite things in the new catalog. Of course, now that I've started playing with stuff, I have some other favorites and I haven't really got to play with this one, but this one takes a little bit more work. Not work, it's just different. Um, and so I want to give it the time that it needs and I don't have the time right now and I can do florals, just plain florals. Those are, those are my jam. 
because Stampin' Up! does florals, and so when you've been doing it for almost 30 years, then you can do florals too. So I'm gonna, again, add my card, my tape here. And I'm just gonna lay this over the top. And fold that over. Again, it's another um, ribbon onto a cardstock that doesn't particularly care to be stuck because it's, they've both been stored round, right? So they're going back into their original shape and then it's on those card stocks that both have texture. So now, see this is already way lighter. Those are no longer purple, they've turned them off. So I know that my ribbons are like kind of in these areas. I wanna make sure that I get that again. But again, card stock that doesn't like to um, hold itself. So I'm gonna make sure this card has enough adhesive. And you could switch to um, CL Plus but then you have to be careful that when you lay this on here that it's in the right spot. That Now I can put it on here and kind of mess with it. Yeah, this looks better squished over. My other one looks okay. I just like this one squished a little bit better. Aren't those ribbons fun? It's a fun touch because I wanted all this beautiful paper because people I know love it. Um, so I wanted that to be like on the card. But then it was kind of plain with nothing. So now I'm going to put this here. But look what happens. So I'm going to put my, and I have to remember that there's two of them so I don't flip it over again. I'll have the bad one. Where did I put my dimensionals? I'm just going to put the dimensional right here. And they just fit there. And this is plenty to hold it and it will stick to this. Just like that. And then for the um, embellishments for this, I chose some more sparkles, the Adhesive Back Sparkle Gems, and you can see it's in silver and, and black and gold. And I'm gonna use the gold. They're a little bit golder than um, this paper, but they're not golder than our beautiful gold that we just made from Pecan and Stella. I mean, that's a really pretty gold because it's hard to get a gold ink unless it's a metallic. So I'm gonna put five on here. This also looks like it's running out. Everything's running out at the same time. So let's do one. See, look, look at how close that is to that. Beautiful. Two. You could probably do um, seven on this because it's a sparkly card and these are sparkly and be just fine. This was um, some of the things left from my triad class. You always, I always end up with um, things. I'm just gonna do it this way. Cut. Isn't that pretty? And it, I love the different elements. I love that it's got the sparkle and the overt sparkle and then the jute and the rope that kind of, this is not, my other one's much better than that. I think that this is sitting different than it is on my other one. And you know what, I'm just gonna, add, I'm gonna add another dimensional on that one and we'll just go over the top of it. So this one's just shoved over a little bit more, more I wanted more of this to show. Um, but then when it was all said and done, I thought I just need to squish that in just a fraction. You can see it's just a fraction more over. They're both fine. You could also take your Wink of Stella if you want super sparkle and color down the sides of that. I'm gonna do one more little thing to see if you can see it in here how sparkly it is so there you go I will probably not that mm, this this will post before my other one so I should have one more video I think that will post I haven't actually said anything to post obviously I haven't even finished this one um but more than likely the next time I talk to you as far as filming it will be in june so everybody have a great one but continue to check your email and like i said follow me on instagram um that's where you'll see most of our travel pictures have a great one bye